All right. My name, as people know me on the internet forums, I mean on the Reaper forums, rather, is Pixeltarian. And I'm going to show you something I made. And that something is a remote drum tracking setup via iPad. So, let's move this all squarey squares. Um, I want to do some stuff. And I'm tracking drums and I, I forget things and I, you know, have reverb on the track when I sit down and then I gotta get up and then I gotta walk all the way over to the console and I gotta disable it, then I gotta go back, then I forget, then I see that you know, I did a whole take and one of the tracks wasn't armed because I'm stupid. Um, then I gotta redo the whole thing. But having this right by the drum set kind of eliminates, I want to say, every single problem I generally run into. Um, so let's, I'm just gonna go through like some scenarios. Like this scenario where like, let's just like the worst scenario, like I have one track armed. It's not even a track that I have something related to the drums on. But it's armed and that's just what I did because I'm dumb. Um, that's okay because I have this by my drum set and I look at the screen before I start and I'm like, oh geez, I didn't arm anything and that's armed still from the vocal take and what the heck is my problem. Um, so just disarm that. Then I can go to previous track. Then I can go to parent of ch uh, parent of child or children tracks, uh, track or tracks, which selects the parent folder. Then push the baby icon, selects all the children, arm them. Now I'm ready to track my drums. Um, let's say also in this scenario though, I had the effects enabled, and and then I noticed that when I'm just about to start, I'm like, oh reverb in my headphones and that's not going to work for tracking drums because I'm going to hear everything like a split second after I play it and that's like impossible. So just uh, click that parent button again, effects on and off button, turns the effects off and I'm good to go. Uh, start recording and then let's say in like like five seconds, one, two, three, four, I screw up really bad like right there and I'm like well I know I don't want that take, I'm never going to want that take. I don't even want to look at that take ever again. I don't want to sit down and have to deal with deleting all that take. It's just, I don't want it. Well, just click this little toilet and you can just start over. And it, it deletes your take up till then from disk, which is awesome. That's just what, what I want. I hate sitting down and having crappy takes that I know I have no interest in keeping. So then top right here is the play stop button. And dialogues work really good with the touching. And yeah, didn't keep that one. Um, so let's see. So then we got, you know, these are next and previous markers. So I want to go to the next marker. And I want to go to the next marker. Now I want to go to the next measure. Well, then I go to the row below there. And then that just navigates measures instead of markers. And let's say I want to insert a marker right there. I just put the little plus marker symbol. And there's a new marker. So yeah, top row. You, you know what that does now. Next marker, previous marker, insert marker, play, and if it's if, if play is already engaged, then stop, you know, toggle, play, stop. Um, next row, previous measure, next measure, uh, select children, select the parent, next, r next, what is it, row? Yeah, row. Next row, previous and next tracks, selects those, puppies. Uh, effects on and off, let's go to one with effects on, off, on, off, showed you what the toilet did. Uh, next row. Next row is previous and next tracks, plural, which means it's going to keep its current selection when you select previous and next. So, previous track, previous tracks, which is kind of nice. Uh, arm and disarm, you all know what that does. Uh, you know, there's the basically the same record button you'd find on the transport. Uh, these are undo and redo buttons, so undo, undo, redo, redo, redo. Um, and these two last ones on the bottom right are uh, screen sets, 
and you, you're going to need um, the SWS extensions for this because a lot of these, I think the parent one, maybe children and parent actions, they use the SWS, and then Windows Sets I think is an SWS extension. I could be wrong. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, if I want to go to the mixer, I just click tap the mixer view and then I can kind of control my faders a little better. Woo. Yeah. Which is which is kind of nice. Faders a little little easier to control them in in the mixer view. Um, and then I just left them uh, in this window view. I left the this peeking out so I can click this again and have my I don't know what you'd call it maybe the the media item view or whatnot. Um, so that's a general overview of what it does. And let me do one thing quick. Because this is basically the reason I got it. It's so I can sit down and with my magic magical index finger I can go, alright, disable those effects. Select all the children. Arm all those children. Click record. Oh, I don't like that. Yuck. Uh, I don't like that. Yuck. Uh, I like that one. And save. And that's just so easy. As a, and it, yeah, if you're trying to track drums alone, you don't have to download my thing here. But I mean, this is just a good example of my my particular solution. And this particular solution is pretty dang awesome. Um, just kind of heavenly in comparison to things I've tried like running out the uh, Mackie control over there. I actually sold my Mackie control to buy the iPad so I could do this. Um, another cool, th there's other cool apps but it's a little bit unrelated but one thing I want to touch on is this thing called Touch OSC. Basically on your computer you can make your own interfaces. Like I drew all these boxes, I put all these labels on here, I made these little panning things, I, you know, you just open up this kind of design program and make whatever you want. These are all toggle switches, you know, arm, mute, solo, what, whatever. Um, now that I can use it as an external display though, I don't know if I'm going to use faders and stuff so much, but what I might do is use a screen like this one, which gives me like just a bunch of actions I use all the time like open track effects, item volume up and down, open item effects, uh, bypass item effects, uh, shift items up and down, um, go to marker navigation, insert marker, go to the next and previous takes, load window sets, a uh, little transport here, select children and parent like the drum tracker, uh, glue, normalize, you know, you can just put whatever buttons you want in here, but you can just make them do whatever you want. Um, you need a couple programs, uh, they are called for Mac. I can only stick that on Mac, but I know something like them exists on PC. Um, Touch OSC Editor. I think it's called the same thing for both. Um, OSC U Later or Osculator um, for Mac is the thing that um, makes it uh, takes it from being just a MIDI MIDI data and kind of translates it into being. Uh, Oh wait, it takes it from being Wi-Fi data and translates it to uh, kind of pseudo MIDI MIDI inputs and outputs. Like your Reaper will see like a a faux MIDI I/O just for the the Wi-Fi business. So yeah, um, those are two things that are awesome. And this is whoop, this is pretty awesome too. There's an update coming out. I'm pretty excited about. It works fairly well. I mean, it works as good as the Mackie control I had works. So, that being said, it, it works you know fairly good. The new one I heard is gonna have a Reaper mode and all this crazy cool stuff. So, keep a lookout for that. It's called uh, AC7 Pro. So, what I've showed you are Air Display, Touch OSC, and AC7 Pro. Um, yeah. So, if you're a drummer, strongly recommend that Air Display thing. It is like. I can't even believe I'm living in this time period cool. Like, it makes me feel like I'm, like, from the future or something. Um, so, yeah. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the video and that it gave you some insight and, you know, enlightenment and whatnot. 
So yeah, that's that.